that's so interesting about the storm. I mean, it was 1 1 30 this morning when yeah. we really started seeing some impressive wind gusts upwards of 80 miles an hour, even at the downtown airport. That's right. You know, from the downtown airport to the Northland, start about 1 o'clock just northwest of KCI. You know, initially it was about 60, 65 mile per hour winds, but then I started to see those 70 to 80 mile per hour winds showing up on first alert radar. That's when the red flag kind of went off in my head because when you get 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts, that's when you can start to get more substantial damage, more widespread damage, tree branches, big tree branches, trees, widespread damage to the power grid, and even roof damage. You know, you can even peel the roof off the homes and possibly even some mobile home damage. So that's what really keeping me off that last night a serious situation was unfolding. As I mentioned, it started up here in Leavenworth, came across the airport, Zona Rosa, Riverside. That's where we had the measured 80 mile per hour wind gusts across the Northland, Gladstone, through downtown Kansas City. East sides of the metro into Independence, down toward Blue Springs, Raytown, and Lee Summit, and also back on the southwest edge towards Overland Park. You know, there were dozens of reports of high wind and tree damage, and a lot of tree damage. Again, measured wind gusts 60 to 80 miles per hour. That 80 mile per hour mark is like an EF0 tornado. At the height of the storm, 110,000 people or customers were without power. And so far, 40,000 trees have sustained some type of damage, either branches or completely toppled over by the strong winds and the saturated soil. First alert radar, much quieter now. Let's take a look here in Kansas City, just off to the west there along the interstate, west of the Speedway and west of Bonner Springs. There's a little rain shower occasionally, a strike of lightning. These are moving from the north to the south over Kansas City. I think once we lose the sunlight, We'll lose the showers the rest of the evening. Looking pretty good. Not concerned about any severe weather tonight here in the metro. City View Cam, downtown Marriott Hotel, 74 degrees. Winds out of the northeast at 21 miles per hour. 74 degrees feels really nice. An inch and a half of rain in the bucket up there at KCI. So it just wasn't the wind and the hail. There was a lot of flash flooding with these storms, especially east toward Marshall. 74 in Trenton. Chillicothe at 76 degrees this evening, 79 in Belton. Showers not quite to Butler yet. They're a little bit warmer, 81 degrees. For the rest of the evening here in the Big KC, on a Friday night, 40% chance of a few showers, about 77 degrees. Those showers will end after sunset. North wind about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Saturday is the day to get outside if you have any more storm damage to clean it up or just to take in relatively cool and calm conditions for tomorrow. Starting off in the morning about 64, only making it to about 80 degrees for much of the afternoon with a mostly sunny sky. Again, try and get out, enjoy Saturday because Sunday we could have more storms rolling on through. High temperatures for tomorrow. Mostly in the low 80s, just about anywhere you go. If you're heading out to Sporting KC, 7:30 is the kickoff for this one. 78 degrees, halftime 74. This will be a really good game weather-wise, and I'm sure it'll be a good game sporting-wise. As I mentioned, Sunday, I think we'll see another weak cool front move southward across the area late in the afternoon into the evening. A 40% chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms, and it starts to get a little bit toasty on Monday and Tuesday. And, and then another storm system rolling through through Wednesday and Thursday. You know, we just haven't quite hit our pace with that summer pattern where the rain just shuts off, and that's why flooding concerns will remain through next week.